Good morning, everyone. Welcome to No Crime, No Time. Today is October 31st, 2020, and this is the 15th day, I'm sorry, 15th anniversary day of when this all began. So I thought we should come together and gather um, and just kind of like have an open chat about all the things we want to talk about as truthers, as guilters. I mean, some some people are guilters. I can't imagine why, but that's their opinion. I did want to talk about the code. If anybody wants to talk about the code, I'm here for that. Um, but I just want to welcome you all. Um, this is our 15th year anniversary since the start of this entire Avery case when it comes to the disappearance of the 25-year-old Teresa Halbach, who was a freelance photographer. She was um, starting her new business. She had just got her car a couple years earlier. Her brother was a lawyer, one of her brothers, Tim. The other brother, Mike, I'm not even sure what he was doing at that time because <laughs> We've never been able to establish, like when I first started doing his background checks back in 2016, Mike Halbach was coming up as the brewer's manager in his background, not manager, but um, video editor, working that way. And then later his job seemed to change, but the brewers disappeared on all of his uh, background checks and it changed into the Green Bay Packers. Now, Tim, the older brother, um, he actually went to college and straight out the door was hired by one of the most pristine lawyer companies. You know, it just seemed weird. Like everybody got prosperous. Everybody was handed a like their own wish come true when Teresa Halbach exited the picture. Let's say good morning to everybody because it is open chat. I want to make sure that I <clears throat> try to get everybody involved here. We have Teresa Lobinger. Hi, RD. And big old heart there. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Shane Henry says, hello. Hello, Shane. Good to see ya. Myra Pennington. I love that you showed up. Thank you. Hi there. Finally made it. Need to catch up. Good deal. Lock them all up, God wins. Can't believe this nightmare isn't over. <laughs> I agree with that. I think this is a nightmare. And for it to be going on for 15 years, it it does need to come to an end. I'm going to take a minute to get my puppy. Well, she's not a puppy. She's four. Maya. Out of the room because she's giving a morning bath on her paws here. Hold on. Come here, my Maya. You weigh too much, you little piggy pig. She's a pug, and she sounds like a little piggy pig. There you go, lovely. I should have put you out here before. Hey, it's real life here. <laughs> you might hear kids knock on the door. You got 20 bucks? <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Where were we? So, Teresa Lovinger says, I was just going to order an ASY hoodie. They're really well made. Um, I think that for me, it keeps me, when I wear my hoodie, I kind of feel like a sense of being part of the thread, you know, thread of the material. It does bring me a sense of that. Where the funding goes, I couldn't tell you. I can tell you I bought mine in person. It was quite interesting because here I am, rubber ducky, right? And uh, I went over to, drove with a bunch of my friends. Well, actually researchers too. And we went to the Avery Salvage Yard. Many other places too. I actually may have some videos I can release from some of that trips that I don't think I ever released. So that'll be a good, fun thing to look at some Probably someday this week. I have a lot going on with two channels now. Um, and it was quite interesting. 
it was Earl that actually allowed me to come behind the counter. He had no idea. None of the family understood who Rubber Ducky is, first of all. I was just another face in the crowd. And they still were real nice. Um, Earl allowed me to come behind the counter and go through a box and find a hoodie that actually fit me really good. And um, then I tried to tell them who I was and they were like, okay, sure. You know, I'm like on YouTube. I have a, I have a channel that's helping Stephen and Brenda and so forth. And um, it was a very interesting, they took a picture with me. Both Chuck and Earl took a picture with me. So it, 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 it was, it was interesting because of such extensive knowledge of the case what can be known anyway and then the the people that are that close to what really could have taken place having no idea i knew everything i knew and yet i got no result from it other than they were very nice people you know just polite um friendly took time out of their work schedule to come over and actually say hi to us. Could have been that we were four ladies. Who knows? Um, but it was an enjoyable, it was an enjoyable trip. I also visited Teresa Hallbach's um, grave site, took pictures of that, spent some alone time there. Felt very empty. It felt, and I'm very intuitive, the grave site felt literally empty. It it appeared to be abandoned. There was nothing fresh on there for many, 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 many years. Like you could tell nobody had visited this gravesite in God knows how long. It was very disturbing. I felt it was weird because Teresa's gravestone is actually the back side of her, her mother and father's. It was like, um, she was, uh, I don't know. It felt weird. Like, is it normal to put someone on the backside of a headstone of your parents? I mean, what? It, I don't know. I haven't ever researched to see if that's normal. It felt weird to me in the sense like we put that behind us. It was weird also because the angel is is on there is quite prominent and it's it's back was turned and was facing out towards the parents there really was a lack of absolute lack there was just a lack completely in seeing this it was across the street from a factory it was weird Another place that I was drawn to was her church. I went to the church. I also went to the crystal ball. Um, I don't know what it's called. It's like a place where you can meet, like a clubhouse. It's not always open. It's only open when they have meetings. It's a club. The crystal ball had a lot of purple trim and um, I thought that was strange because it was a weird purple against this white. I was able to walk. There's a lot of different things about this property. Like it's definitely a little mini clubhouse of some kind. There's a stage. I could see through the windows. I did take pictures. Um, it was very like, I could see on the table. It was for more, more refined people because everything was very clean, very elegant. That you like even though it you couldn't it wasn't a place where, you know, you would go for to eat. You could tell that they could serve food at like it, like a church without the church where you would have gatherings and such called the Crystal Ball. It's right across from from where Teresa went to church, okay? St. John's. All right, so this place when I saw through the window, and you know, I will go um, get some of these pictures together. You know what? I don't know where I would have put those pictures. I wonder if I could actually dig them out because it would be so interesting to show you this. It was very unnatural. Um, I felt like I was sneaking in on secrets 
totally. I was actually nervous. Um, it's interesting because it's at the crossroads of B. Like B is in every direction. There's so many B signs that you're just like in, inebriated with the letter B. I thought that was weird. Let me see if I even... I don't even know if I uploaded those off my camera yet. But... It might be worth a check. Might have come off my camera roll. I'm not sure. Let me just check. If not, this week I'll get together just some random videos of over time of where I've been through the case, um, <clears throat> investigations that I've been on and so forth. And I'll just release like a montage because I don't think I'm going to find it that quick anyway. All right, let's get over to the crowd. Let's see what we have going on. Teresa says, hall box have always been suspicious to me. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's been a feeling of they knew it wasn't what was being portrayed. And yet we don't see these swollen eyes and these tears of a fresh grieving process that would be natural. It might be okay for one not to have red swollen eyes because maybe that person deals differently. But when you, when you see completely the faces of all the family and there's like, there's no signs of the grieving process. There's an unnatural feeling lingering. Shane Henry says, I'm curious to see who will visit Teresa's grave today. Wouldn't that be interesting if we just hopped in the car and just sat there and watched? No one would show up, I assure you. That grave hasn't been visited in years. Teresa says, I'm going up there ASAP. Where are you going? Oh, to get your hoodie. Teresa, why don't you go there today and go to the grave and just sit there and watch and see if anybody comes to visit that grave. For real, nobody's going to come. It has not visited. Nobody has been to that grave. Like, it's got f remnants of stuff that literally has been there for 10 years that is like faded away and ruined and tipped over and sideways. There's no love of any kind being offered in anything. Whereas the other graves around had, you know, even teddy bears. And Teresa asked if it could be a Freemason clubhouse. Could be. I don't know. That's the feel I got, to be honest. It's called the crystal ball. How fitting, huh? Maria Maria says, I just finished doing up my husband's stone and have anything put on the back was never even an option. It's like they don't want to spend any money on a new one and just at the cheapest option. So there's an answer. Shane Henry says, from what I hear, Karen H. married her deceased husband's brother and had two kids with him. Karen's husband now is not Teresa's father. Oh, it's her uncle. And that is correct. You are very right, Shane Henry. You know, how is that works? Um, you think that's strange, but in our history, and I'm not defending this or saying it's right or wrong, but in our history, if there was a death of an older brother, perhaps in war, or not even an older brother, just a brother of marrying age. Um, if a brother died in war and there was a single brother left behind, it was tradition that he was possibly to um, be considered to step in the brother's place to carry on the family name. So that is, that is something that I was taught by my grandfolks. Slayer Rock says, how the hell do you approach code breaking like that, RD? 
I have a high IQ, but you blew my mind yesterday. Oh, <laughs> thank you, dear. I approach it with a lot of prayer. I've always been good at like um, problem solving and seeing a little bit outside the box. And I think that's what attracted me is wanting to walk in the truth in my life. And I could see this was a puzzle um, in the Avery case too of unclearness. And it's what snagged me into it, you know. He goes on to stay, say, Steve's lucky to have Angelo Dundee, KZ, in his corner, and KZD, Amato, too, RD. Ah, uh -huh. you're so cool. Thank you, love. Teresa says, that's right, Shane. Yeah. Teresa says, as a parent, I'd have lots of questions. I'd be at the PD daily. I feel you there. I really do. I mean, honestly, the calmness in which the call was put in by the family, the interviews and how calm they were. Um, yeah, that one video where they interview Karen Halbach and she's sniffling, she's got her tissue. There's no tears. The tissue's light as a feather. <laughs> But she's she's on the camera and she's boohooing. And then the camera guy says, cut. And then Karen thinks she's off film. And she literally turns and like the switch of a, a, a flip of a switch. She actually turns it into a smile and looks cheerful and just goes on to talking. It just shocked me. I mean, it's out of place. It doesn't flow well with somebody that's truly grieving over the loss of their daughter. Or at this point, they're missing their daughter, is missing. They don't know if at their, that moment their child is being tortured violently or not. And they're able to just turn it off and get into the moment. And, oh, and we can't hear exactly what she's saying because it's fading off. But she's just like, yeah, I can do that Tupperware party, Karen. Sure. And it's, you know, and like I said, I'm filling in whatever. It just was <sighs> disconnected. Ian Rose says Teresa's family gave her life to the police as a free murder, for some reason, somebody within her family wanted her dead. The undercover cop working for Auto Trader was part of the planning of her murder. Very well could be. Um, you know, it's interesting that when you work with the locals in Manitowoc, and I've, uh, I can't even help them. I really can't because this this has to crack open. It's a cult. It's a sexual cult that is in that area. I don't care what you guys think. I'm crazy. I have talked to so many different locals. Like, I literally can tell you that they're not all together in one basement conjuring up a plan. I am meeting individual locals that I am introducing to each other that are sharing the same damn stories involving underground passages at the schools from Lincoln High to wherever and the kids coming home from school and telling about these passages and that they lead to places you don't want to talk about. Think about Steve Grimm and how he was he was saying this all about the police and Kasurik and how, because, you know, Steve knew Kay Kasurik. Now, Kasurik's the original sheriff in 1985. Kasurik's the one that basically targeted Stephen with everything he had, and that was including the law enforcement, indeed. Kasurik had a sister named Kay who befriended a gentleman named Steve Grimm, who later was reported to have committed suicide off of a bridge. Okay. 
First of all, Steve Grimm had went on line. He had specifically emailed very important people to get the word out what Kay had said after Kay's death. So this would have been the sister to Kusurik, the guy that arrested Stephen and targeted him. Later came Peterson. Okay, so Kusurik's the first one. So Kay had reported to Steve Grimm, according to Steve Grimm's emails, that um, Kusurik had shot his own brother in the head. The brother made a recovery and did not press charges. Kay had reported incestual abuse in the basement of the Kusurik home, severe, um, borderline, borderline satanic type behavior. Very wicked. So Steve emails this out and it leaks. It leaks out. He's very, very upset with the idea um, that this has leaked out because now he is explaining he is in fearful, he is in fear of his life, that he is going to be killed. Um, he's saying at this point that, you know, he's he's going to die for it. And sure enough, we get a police report of a bizarre story very quickly in the paper, very short write-up about how they have Steve Grimm arrested because he thought he was is on a mission in a castle, but he was really on some weird flipping out thing going on at none other than Lincoln High School. Later, it's reported very shortly that Steve Grimm commits suicide and jumps off a bridge. You guys want to talk about suicides? They're all in this case, all over the place. How about when the Ricky Hotchletter case came up and you had the situation where DCI goes in to investigate the case when it's all said and done? I believe he was found dead in his car. How about the accountant that's working there for Manitowoc? who dies because he drinks liquid arsenic in his drink. They call that suicide. So, yeah, um, all the locals that I've talked to, and you've heard Dave Bogotka, Dave Bogota, I call him Bogota, but I think it's Bogotka. Um, you've heard him talk about these, this clubhouse, this weirdness. You've seen the Bambetta, um, Bambi, or... I can't hardly say it anymore. Bim, b b b case, the Lori B case, and all the pictures. And there's kids there, and there's cops naked on tables, and it just gets so unsortly. The whole case is wrought with this feeling of satanic undertones, right? What I'm getting at is the code that I broke points to Ed Edwards. It does. And Ed Edwards was known to make friends with cops. We have a cop car sitting down at Cuss Road. It's at the very end. It's there in all the pictures. It never gets moved. All the other vehicles move. Not this one. And it's always held my eye because it's like, it's a state patrol car. Think about it. Cameron worked for the state patrol board. Cameron was the one that gave up his career with the state patrol board to work with Ed Edwards. Cameron talked to Ed Edwards all the time. Ed Edwards told him that he had friends in every county he ever lived with that worked for the police station for the police, for the law enforcement. If Ed Edwards had had a, a police car, <sighs> makes you wonder what could have happened. We have Zellner talking about it, how like the victims bludgeoned outside the back of the vehicle with the car door, cargo door open. What do you guys think? Let's go over here. 
Locked him all up, God wins, says, or she's still alive, whole thing set up for sure. Could be. Teresa says she doesn't have a way there right now. I feel ya. Pandemic and all, it makes it hard to travel too. Locked them all up, God wins, says. Think friend or family killed in one of their rituals, then frame Stephen. Well, we have a new moon on October 31st, 2005. So there was no light. And today, tonight, we have a full moon. The code came out. It leads to Ed Edwards. Um, there's, there's no other way about that. Whether that code is associated to Teresa, I am not sure. It came out the day before she went missing. He talks about a two for one. We have both Teresa and Carmen to consider. Myra says, my own mother was like that. Cry, get angry, happy at the drop of a hat. Mentally unstable. Don't know how to explain the rest of family, though. I feel that. I do. Myra Pennington says an answer. So hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Teresa Lobinger says borderline personality disorder. Myra Pennington says, I'm not certain. She had been institutionalized a couple of times, but it was hush hush. Raised by gypsies. Hi, how are you? Says, I could be mixed up, but I remember reading Ed Edwards was in a different state at the time. Teresa says, Carmen's death at same time has always bothered me. Me too. You know, intuitively, I have always been drawn to Carmen. In a way, like a young sister, I saw her in a vision one time where I was the mother in the vision and I put my hand on her like belly button area to, cause I was crying that she wasn't ever able to have her own children. And my hand went straight through to the bottom of the coffin. And I, I woke straight out of the vision and I was like, oh, where's her pelvic? So I guess take that with whatever you resonate with. <laughs> Who knows? I just really felt like we needed to get all together and gather and really look at this. Um, it feels kind of like we're in like this void where we're just hanging here and we're waiting for a huge change. Like there is something coming our way. Yeah, Teresa, I've never forgot about that. And then um, my best friend's son was walking by the house and he knocked on the door and he came on in and it was, he banged on my door right after, like I barely had a second to catch my breath. And I left the vision. I was just startled. Like I was like, where is her pelvic bone? Because it wasn't there. It was just a prosthetic thing fluffing up her dress to make her look like she had her whole body and her legs were still there but it wasn't her pelvic wasn't it was just so creepy so yeah he's 21 he knocks on the door loudly <laughs> startled the hell out of me I go to the door he comes in he's like are you all right I was walking by and I felt the need to check on you and I was like his name's Tommy and I'm like well god Tommy I don't know and I start talking to him and he didn't know anything at the time about the case. And he's like, well, you know, they could have taken that pelvic bone out. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, it just snaps off the spine because I'm a deer hunter. And human bones are very much like that. But the problem would be, he said, was it would fragment and crack up the um, 
leg sockets, the joints of the legs there. And so you'd, you'd have to get a like a bone saw and you'd have to cut that part out. And I just froze as he told me that because I was like, oh my God, he has no understanding. There are kerf marks on the pelvic bone. And this kid is sitting here telling me that in order to remove a human pelvic bone, it's the joint from the leg to the hip that screws it all up. And I was like, oh my God. And I've never forgot that. I felt like Carmen gave me that vision herself. Um, here he is a hunter and he has no understanding of dismembering bodies like, you know, or anything like that. But yet he's dismembered deer and he knows through high school anatomy of a human bone is very much similar to a human. And he's explaining it. I was just blown away. Um, so I immediately get on the phone and I call a guy that had taken care of my grandmother when she passed and our local, local funeral home, he expressed that often if the kiln, the crematory is small and it is often in the smaller towns, okay, that they have to remove batteries from the body. So if you have a pacemaker, they've got to use bone saws, get in there at the funeral homes, and they've got to dig out this pacemaker battery. Or if there's like metal in their forehead or metal in their leg, because it can actually get to be explode if it's a battery and so forth. And so they use bone saws all the time. And quite often they will... Um, have to simply dismember, for lack of better words, a body slightly to, and it's done with high respect, um, into the smaller crematory. Quite interesting, to say the least. Now, um, let's jump over to the crowd. Myra Pennington says, I honestly believe Carmen holds the answer. She does. I intuitively know this. Think about it, you guys. Let's say, let's make a pretend play. Okay, just walk with me on this for a minute. Let me get a drink and let's walk an imaginative theory. Just a theory. <clears throat> this is a theory <clears throat> like millions that we've had. I'm not going to sit here and back it with fact. I'm not going to sit here and explain why this theory would work. I'm going to let you do all that thought yourself. But I want you to just kind of like play this out in your head. So let's just say that Steve Avery was set up the first time by Ed Edwards. Let's just play this out. And... He gets out exactly when Ed Edwards wants him to in 2003 because Ed Edwards wants to play a little game. Because this is a sick guy. I'm serious. A genius, but sick. He had a universal understanding that not many are going to resonate unless you're a serial killer and you think that, you know, basically you're setting up slaves in your afterlife if you kill people, which is just so disturbing that, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Shake it off. Okay. So now you do everything by the alignment of the stars. You pick your time. You pick your person. You pick it aligning by an astrological chart, if you will. Now all he has to do is get a hold of a cop car. Like I said, we have a county that we know has some issues. <laughs> They're willing to throw a man in prison knowingly and leave him there for nine extra years and hide it to leave an innocent man behind bars. We're not talking somebody above the idea of screwing somebody royally over, obviously. So that's their character. They've proven it. So let's not give them too much of a benefit of a doubt. So they just have to leave a car available. So they do. 
They leave it down on Cuss Road. So <clears throat> let's just say Ed Edwards, we'll just call him Ed. Ed goes down, hops in the police car. He waits. He waits until Teresa Hawbach goes speeding by. She's headed towards Cuss Road. He's gotten behind her. Woo, woo, woo. He pulls her over. What if she pulls over and he says, take it down to the turnaround. She says, oh, okay, gets back in her car, drives it down to the turnaround. Doesn't know what she's done wrong. Probably got her billfold in her hand with her license, registration, got her window down. He walks over and uh, just slaps cuffs on her right through the window, just like Ted Bundy did when he killed that lady. Because Ed Edwards liked to mock other serial killers. He also liked to frame people. Now, he completes the murder, and he beheads her. And he tosses her body off somewhere down in the place where Bushman finds a burial site or whatever. Okay? Pushes the real Rav off the road. Now... The cops know the deed's done, but they're dealing with a serial killer who likes to play games and is smarter than the cops and always making fun of the cops. And he's out there online and he's saying, don't mess with me, put my money in the bag, which maybe they're squelching on the deal. Maybe they're not putting money in a bag. Maybe they got the serial killer pissed off. And they don't know where to look for anything, but they still got to frame Steve Avery. So, woo, 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 here we go. Well, let's get a different car. Let's get a different body. Let's just put it all on him. When the other girl surfaces, we'll deal with it. Besides, his victims never surface. He won't let go of his victims. So we probably don't have anything to worry about. So they set up Steve Avery, and lo and behold, beep, 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 Guess gets, oh, oh shit. They've got two bodies, one headless down here, and they got two rats. They got two investigations doubled up, back to back. One case has no body, just some bones they've borrowed from some other victim. And they've got the real situation down on Cuss. Don't you think that serial killer will be laughing his ass off? Thinking he's outsmarted everybody? I mean, that could have really taken place. So, I don't know. It's just a theory. But if he acted like a cop and he pulls her over, you know. It just makes you wonder. Let's come over here. Teresa says, uh, yes, I remember you telling us about that. Yeah, the Carmen vision. Hey, Carol. Carol is from Rome, Wisconsin. Welcome. Teresa's in Lake Geneva. Dark side of the moon. Woo! Hey, how you doing? Red Eyes 348 says Battle Eddie is going to receive 1,000 fold torture in the afterlife. Yeah, he'll probably have to become every one of his own victims, you know, and relive their position. Carol, Carol says, Oh, you are by my friend who owns fellow mortals to Teresa. Is that Gillette, Wisconsin, raised by gypsies? I'm not sure. Um, so that's one theory that we could really dig into because everybody's like, well, Ed Edwards was, I'm yawning and stretching. Sorry, I got up super early today. Um, 
you know, Ed Edwards was washed off by me so many times because as soon as I would look at it, I would be told, well, he's too old to kill. He was too old to kill. He was too old to kill. Bullshit. Guess what? He did it. He killed after 2005. He killed his, his stepson, Danny G. Yeah, he killed him. And was doing it for the life insurance just to get the money. So this is a killer that's hungry for money. And guess when this all is taking place? When is he waiting on the money for the life insurance? What do you think? Right about the time he needs the money is the same time Teresa Hobart goes missing. Now, let's just say that the county's like, well, we're probably going to have to pay in about $10 million. Not 36 but about 10 So we've got $10 million that we can play with here. We can set up the game we want. I don't know. How many people do you think $10 million can buy? Especially, you really just have to pay off a couple. The rest are going to follow suit because, you know, there's not too many going for the underdog at this point. His own family was confused by it all. Drama must remain on the stage, says hello, everyone. Oh, she put unicorns and sparkly hearts in a little tiny, a little tiny rubber ducky. I love it, love it, love it. Carol says it's a wildlife hospital. Oh, how beautiful. Uh, okay. Raised by Gypsies says Gillette in a con a Canto County. Carol says Ed was old when he shows up where I went fishing and he moved quite well. Carol, you knew Ed Edwards? Carol, you knew Ed Edwards? She says he Ed drove one of those creeper vans that had no windows. Was it white? Because we have this white creeper van with these witnesses seeing Teresa all over the place. Carol says, yes, she met him many times. That's so cool. Are you shitting me? It was a white van? You guys, remember all that crap about this white van? And Teresa, oh, and in that, in that riddle that's, uh, I'll have to, you'll have to go to the video where we break the code and look below. There's a link to where the code's published. If you go on one of their little clickies, it takes you where more of the riddles are put. And he talks about a cow and this girl, and it's just, he calls her a cow or something. Remember Teresa taking pictures of the cow? Then you have the lady reporty that later you hear the report about the lady reporting that Teresa was frantically driving a van. Carol says Ed would fish with us in Oconomowoc. Eventually he wanted to rent me a farmhouse. Raised by Gypsy said, should get Carol on to talk. Carol, we should talk. We should do a live together because I'm studying Ed Edwards. He called himself the hatchet man. Darby Matthews. And remember, people thought he showed up at the courthouse. I think, ma'am, too. Carol, was that indeed him? See, I believe it was because we never truly got a confirmation. Just some random person said from the neighborhood, oh yeah, that's my neighbor so-and-so, but it was never truly checked out. I think Ed Edwards showed up at the courthouse waiting on Kratz to go to Subway with him. Okay? <laughs> Carol says he would, yeah, okay. Um, Darby Matthews. Okay, I read that. Carol said, Ed told me the day I was to see the farmhouse that I was to meet him alone at the lake and he'd take me to it. He said it was down a long farming road 
in a corn field. He was mad when he realized my boyfriend was along and he sped off. Holy crap. Ed Edwards could have so easily skipped the cop car. All he would have had to do, all he would have had to do is have a car for her to photograph. That's it. He could have made a phone call. Maybe that's why she doesn't have an address. He could have went to Deer Camp. Ed Edwards could have been right at Deer Camp. And he could have been like, yeah, you're going to come down Cuss Road, follow this little road, takes you right to my Deer Camp. I don't want to send you the address because it's a Deer Camp. So that's why she wouldn't have an address. He calls her back and gives her directions by phone. She drove a rev right to him. And she opens the trunk for some reason, whether to get more film, whatever, and that's when he does it. There you go. All Ed Edwards would have had to have was one vehicle there for her to photograph. Oh, I will tell you, I had a dream while I was working on the Cassie Aeon case. And it was a vision more than a dream. And it didn't fit the Aeon case at all. We went three ways to Sunday. But I was also working on the Steve Avery case. And it came upon the realization that I believe I am actually seeing something from Teresa's perspective. All it is, is it's all black and all of a sudden daylight just pinpoints and explodes in front of me. I'm standing with my right hip against a royal blue vehicle. And I'm looking up at a white trailer that has a light wood, very small, um, like four foot by four foot entry deck to the front door. And there's three wooden steps that lead up to this little step up and then a step into this trailer. This trailer has wood on it. It has, instead of having... Um, instead of having shutters, there's like a piece of white painted wood over one of the windows. It was very strange, but what instantly was said in the message, and I woke up right away, is, how did I get here? I don't have an address. I grabbed a card, because I keep um, index cards by my bed for visions, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning, exactly 3 a.m. on the nose. Um, and I wrote down, and it said, white trailer, wood, royal blue vehicle. And it said, how did I get here? I don't know the address. And that's it. That's it. So that was a vision. It seemed to me to be like I was going to a place where I was going to go inside. I didn't, I couldn't see my body at all. I couldn't see what I was carrying or wearing, nothing. I was literally looking just like I was me. And I was going up to this house where this wood was. And I was like, how did I get here? I didn't even know the address. And I had never been there before, ever. So that kind of came back on me as to if it was possible that I could have been having um, a vision of sorts related to the Teresa Halbach disappearance. Okay, hold on, gotcha. Let's get back over here. Let's see. Teresa says, thank God you didn't go with him, Carol. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, Darby and I are blown away. We're like, wow, Carol. Carol, I'm just saying, honest to God, that the fact that you knew you knew of Ed, like you knew he was around you, it has me totally intrigued. Um, you know, and people say, well, he was in another state. Oh, okay, because that's that's hard to change. He killed Tim Hawk from Sullivan. He called himself Hatchet Man. 
Oh, it's Hatch. Gotcha. He killed Tim Hatch from Sullivan. This is Carol talking. She says, he killed Tim Hatch from Sullivan. He called himself Hatch Man. Hatch like Hatch and Egg or Hatchet, as if chopping up people. Yeah, I'm telling you, Ed Edwards killed Teresa in my mind. I bet it's taken me so long to lock in. After cracking that code, there's no doubt in my mind. And I've read the other riddles that he put after that and compared them to the dates that were taking place. Um, and he's he's so pissed off at the cops because they're playing games um, and so forth. And you can tell it's it's definitely aligns with what is going on per day of his posts because we know the history of the actual investigation. So when you get the sense that the boss has something that he wants us to do, are we talking Kusurik? Or are we talking E E E? Carol says, I didn't know at the time he was a killer. It wasn't until I saw him on the news and I'm like, oh my God, that's the hatchet man. Holy crap, Carol. Well, you have a purpose to still be here. Hey, Wabla. Good to see you, love. So if Ed Edwards drove a van, okay, a white van, which Carol has confirmed, all right? That could be interesting um, how that works because we have many witnesses seeing Teresa in a white van that were calling in and the investigation was not being done proper. We know that they were just, let's make it be Stephen and that's what the investigators did. And they succeeded for now. But she was seen, what, at McDonald's? She was seen at um, Walmart. This is where she was reportedly seen. She was seen taking a picture of a cow on the side of the road. She was seen driving a white van frantically. That, to my mind, fits more than any of the other stuff. I don't know why. I'm just so confused right now. I truly am. Ah, oh, Wobble says, keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Myra Pennington's talking to Carol, and she says, sounds like you were definitely his new target at the time. Indeed. Carol, if, if you would have went that day alone, he would have had you out in the middle of nowhere. That's crazy. Big dog. Hi, how you doing? Says, oh my God, this is, is this has just blew up any theory I had. I need to look deeper into this. Yeah, Ed Edwards was not too old to kill. First of all, he put in his code work E-G and neither the E nor the G actually fit the Sikiki code, but it left it out in a weird way. And I don't know, intuitively, I was given EG, meaning evergreen. So I thought, whatever, I'll just try it. You know, I'm up for anything. So I Google evergreen serial killer. Boom, Ted Bundy picks up. Oh yeah. Now he's been dead for years before Teresa. However, on March 12th, oh yeah, 1974, which happens to reduce in that code as a 333 moment, okay? He he captures Donna um, Manson. He gets her from Evergreen College. He handcuffs her to the steering wheel and bludgeons her to death. Posing as a cop. Okay. Ted Bundy did this type of thing. So you have to think evergreen. Well, I looked up evergreen in Manitowoc and it comes up with um, this, it's called, oh, what was it called? Something evergreen cemetery. 
it's like Masathoth. I can't say the first word. I can't remember. Kasath. Kasath. That's it. K-O-S-S-U-U-T-H or something. Anyway, it's Kasath Evergreen Cemetery. Interesting enough, it's a very near where this code breaks down to the location. It's it's um, within just a few miles of where her cell phone pings last. Um, it's really bizarre because it's also very near the JBA place as well as um, County Road JJ. It all intertwines really close with that. Um but E.G. could also mean Ed Gein because Ed Edwards liked to really have onions in his code work. So it would break down in multifaceted levels and you would need to be able to use the standard through every single level to get the same thing. Like 333-999-666 would be the end result when you reduce the entire column. But the column itself would be giving the clue. So you could always double check that you were on the right path through the code work because you always would get a solid resonating mathematical equation of a master number. He really wa worked with a lot of astrology. Carol says, La 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 Belle in uh, Kahnemawak is just 15 minutes from Sullivan, Wisconsin, where he killed Tim and Kelly. You know, also the reason that would pull me into this is Tim and Kelly are also Teresa Hallbach's brother and sister's names. Um, and, and Ed Edwards loved to play on names. He loved to intertwine how names would work. And it's really interesting that the last murder that he, well, the murder he got caught for uh, was the Danny murder. Danny G, his stepson. And Danny was spelt very unusual. It was D-A-N-N-I-E. And it happened to be I cracked the code on the anniversary date of the code being released in the paper by 15 years. And my real name, my first given name, written on my birth certificate, is Danny, D-A-N-N-I-E. I found that just bizarre. And like you're saying, you know, he killed Tim and Kelly. We know that. Bethany Marcy, good to see you. Maybe someone wrote a letter to make it look like it was E.E. E. in case Avery was ever found innocent. Well, we're going to have to dig into the sicky code a little bit deeper now that we know the actual code. But I have to take a breather from it because I have to focus on um, my family life right now with my dad. And um, he's doing well. He's recuperating. But also, I have to find a new job or somebody better hire me. <laughs> um, because when I called in to my boss to let her know I had a week off, I had to have a week off. Um, she had found out that in the spring, I am moving to Colorado. And I believe that upset her terribly bad because she had always been a good friend and always really sweet. And I had not really had any history of lacking in work. My I had straight A's across the board. All my training was up to date. I'd never been written up. I'd been basically doing exactly what I was supposed to and loving it. Um, and she just literally said, well, I'm going to have to let you go. So... Yeah, four days ago, I found out, five days ago, that um, I'm no longer employed, which shocked the crap out of me. I've had wonderful blessings come in so far, and uh, I do feel very um, loved and supported by people, but it was a shock. So if you need somebody that can crack a code and do major research, you know, on a case and so forth, here I am, up for hire. You hear me, Zoner? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Hey, you never know. You never do know. Maybe Zoner will call me up one day and be like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would definitely let you know. Teresa says, article by BuzzFeed. John Cameron says he knows Edwards killed TH. I absolutely agree with Cameron. It's now my firm belief. I will go on record that I believe Ed Edwards actually killed Teresa Halbach. 
and now it's just a matter of how we bake the cake. And I'm sure the more codes I crack, the more I'll understand what he's doing. Carol believes John Cameron 100%, so do I. John Cameron is a retired homicide detective, Teresa says. I don't know. I read he was retired from state patrol, and he may have been a detective, yeah. You can post the link, Teresa. I'll, re I'll um, approve it. If it lets you. I don't know. YouTube's kind of been dumb. Carol says, yes, and I'd love to play on a name. Big Dog says, so if I get this right from what I'm hearing, Ed Edwards was around the area of Wisconsin at the time of the TH murder. He left a coded letter that's been cracked and points to him as a murderer. We don't know where he was at the time of the murder. Um, we have a code that was put in the paper that has been cracked that does lead us to believe that Ed, and this would be Ed Edwards on um, that code because it is of a level that cannot be just simply duplicated. Um, but then we have the Sikiki note, and I have not dug fully into that. So that is something we will want to really look at. But we do not know where Ed Edwards was at the exact time of the murder. That is something we will have to very much, truly try to figure out. Though we have to be very discerning because there's so much false information to send us the wrong way. Myra Pennington says, that's awful, hoping something much bigger and better comes your way, Ducky. I have a lot of faith, Myra, and thank you, Dark Side. She said, sorry to hear that. Okay, Teresa says it won't let her post a link. Teresa, I will try to get that link on this video. I think I know the one you're talking about. You mean with the code work from Ed Cameron? Yeah, we can get, not Ed Cameron, Lord, from Cameron about Ed. I'll get that link attached. I am... Otherwise, you can email it to me at rubberducky2005 at yahoo.com. And then I'll put it in the video below. Ah, uh, thanks, Big Dog. Says, that's amazing. Keep up the work. Oh, gotcha. Teresa says, he says he's a retired cold case detective. Yes, that's perfect. Slayer Rock says, unnecessarily vindictive boss. What comes around goes around. Well, you know, karma catches us all. I don't like to talk about it because I'm not the perfect person, you know. I got obsessed with the Steve Avery case for so long that I even, like, quit acknowledging that I needed anybody else in my life but the Steve Avery case. And it, it cost me so much. So I do take this um, in moderation. I get obsessed about it, but just like one time a month. <laughs> so, all right, my lovelies, this is our 15th year anniversary of the disappearance of Teresa Halbach. Um, so I thought we would basically just kind of walk through the scenario a little bit and talk about whatever comes up. I mean, when you think about it, Teresa would have went missing at around... Somewhere between 2.15 and, you know, to be honest, how do we even know where she, you know, was anywhere that day? Like if this was a brand new missing persons case and we have to establish the last person that has seen this person truly alive that can, that agrees that they're the last person. Well, the problem is... Steve Avery did see her, but we have daylight saving time going on that day, which gives or takes an hour. Um, we have Brendan Dassey saying he saw her walk towards, no, but uh, Bobby Dassey saying he saw her walk towards his uncle's vehicle when actually, or vehicle's trailer, Stephen's trailer, when actually... <coughs> he's now, Barb, his mom, has said that he said she drove away. So now somebody had to have seen her when she drove away. So the next thing that comes to mind 
is the Valder's guy filling up fuel for the day. Seeing the green utility sports vehicle drive by between 345 and 4. In the fall, you fall, you fall clock forward. So it would have been possible. There could have been an hour delay with that time thing. So to, to me, it could have been more. And the green vehicle was seen. Bobby driving a green vehicle was seen by Blaine on the school bus. And that was a Ford green truck, according to Blaine later on in line. So we have an awful lot of green vehicles going by at the same exact time that she would have. What if Stephen was off by an hour just because of daylight savings time? She leaves the property. That would put her right in line with the Valder's guy. Because it could have been, it could have been that he was seeing her drive off towards Larrabee. I wish he would have paid close attention to see what other vehicle was coming. Any updates on the appeal process? Slayer Rocks wants to know. Nope, not yet. Big Dog says, I believe Bobby Dassey has got some involvement, definitely after listening to Brendan's interview. He mentioned, quote, he was angry and upset with TH because she wouldn't put his blazer in Auto Trader. Bobby owned a blazer and Avery didn't. Avery did own a blazer, but it had been photographed already by her. So that's how he gets knocked out of the running. Stephen K says, I think the rubber ducky lady did it. I do too. Um, I've looked at that code three ways to Sunday. Once people actually have time to digest it, I think you're going to find that that code is cracked in a way that is going to allow us to really get some understanding into this case. And from what Carol is saying, she knew Ed Edwards. He, he lived in the vicinity he was a w an hour away from Stephen at the time of the crime, from what I was told. Now, I have not validated that, but I have heard that he was within one hour of the property um, at the time, around the time of the crime. I don't know for sure. Oh, Stephen saying, I committed the murder? Nah, I'm not the murder in kind love. <laughs> I do think I broke that code good. I think once people have time to really dig into the code, I did put it over, posted it. I went over to, I believe his name, what was his name, Lacey and Scott. I went over to Scott Peterson's Is Innocent. I put the code there because I feel it can help that case as well. There are people looking into the code there. So far what they're seeing, they say it looks very good. So I will keep you posted. Sounds good, big dog. I appreciate you showing up. Good good to have you on the channel with us. You have a great day, and I'm glad you're coming back to listen. Slayer Rock says, Eric Cozy is still working the case. Now he needs a conduit because he knows the answers. Rest in peace, big man. I'm your conduit. Yeah. Eric Cozy and I shared the exact same birth date. We were both born May 27th. We both align with getting these two innocent, wrongfully convicted people home. We both align with showing the truth. If there is a way that he can use me through my intuitive tarot cards or just channeling the way that I've had done with me before, sending me visions, whatever, I welcome the solution with only the best intent for all those that deserve the best intent. Stephen King says, 
Who had opportunity and motive? Ed Edward. Carol says Ed was a low-level informant, informant, informant. There we go. I believe so. She believes Ed was a low-level informant. Yeah, he's he's constantly talking about how dumb the police are and how you know. And then it says right in the code. I mean, as clear as a bell. Why you need Ed? All in one sentence, all clumped together in the very center of the code. Why you need Ed? Come on. Come on. For real. Good answer. Teresa says, not Stephen. So the question again was, Stephen King asked, who had opportunity and motive? Teresa saying, not Stephen. No, not Stephen at all. Carol says, like a snitch, Ed would rat out people. I've heard that. And I think Cameron talks about that, too. He would do it so that he could get behind the scenes a little bit with the cops. Drama must remain on the stage, says my wedding anniversary was 52777. 527 seems to be a very powerful date. Um, I don't know why. But it does. Every time um, I go to pick numbers, I'm giving my own birth date back. Carol said, yes, Ducky, that's why he did it. Teresa says he was at the WMP, or I'm sorry, WM3 trial and gravesite too. Oh, the West Memphis 3 trial? And gravesite too. I tell you, if I'd have been that mother and I put a gravesite together, I would have a camera hidden. Stephen King says, I just heard about the German guy the other day. Has anything ever come about him? What if there really is no German guy? <laughs> what if it was just Ed Edwards? Uh, raised by gypsies. Can't help but think it may have been some sort of ritual with Ed and the police. Me too, raised by gypsies. The German guy is interesting, Teresa said. Very much so. I mean, the cops basically let him go after telling the wife that she was safe and secure. Huh. Sounds like Gregory Allen's story after telling Penny Bernstein that she's fine and then letting Gregory go and she's getting calls. And I do too, Teresa. I think they supplied the cop car. They're really good, you know, at bringing in the supplies. That's their only job in this case, Manitowoc, is to supply the supplies. Well, did they supply a cop car? Just leave it parked at Cuss Road? Yeah. I mean, when you really look at this case from the bigger picture, you go through where we've got so many things that we're like, how can this be coincidental, please? Well... If the killer is Ed Edwards and he's pulling the damn strings, you're going to have dates aligned. You're going to have names aligned. You're going to have idiosyncrasies. You're going to have serendipity because he is playing with an atomic clock. He's looking astrologically at the squares in the birth charts of people. He's finding out who's going to falter and who's not. Who's going to be where, when they are. You think astrology is something that nobody can really understand, but that's not true. The universe literally does have its own clock. It's called the Wheel of Fortune. And when the Wheel of Fortune turns, the clock spins. You can tell by when stars are going to move. Our ancestors did it all the way back to Egypt, for God's sakes. I mean, you say, well, this is a this is a blue moon tonight. It's a hunter's moon. It's also not going to be seen again in any of your lifetimes, most likely. And it hasn't been seen since like 1944. 
There's that number, 44 1111 Um, Things are going to change off this blue moon. KK's exactly the sleazy kind of person that would have worshipped Ed Edwards, in my personal opinion. KK's the kind of guy that was, I don't know, not ballsy enough to actually really be like somebody in his life, always having to leech off of some innocent person. Yeah. But yeah, KK ain't that bright. KK's the kind of person who's going to be the one to crack this case wide open. He'll probably do it over some silly little thing. KK could have been her stalker, absolutely. Drama must remain on the stage, says I think Kenny and Ed both were working together. Well, sure. Think about it. KK having a little out-of-the-way meeting there with a serial killer and how he would have got his jollies off on that. And then he would have been able to pull the puppet strings. And he would have wanted to hear the whole damn story, how it was done, right? Isn't it interesting that KK comes up with a completely different scenario than could have even happened? So it makes you wonder where to get the story of all of this tied to the bed and stabbing her and choking her and cutting her hair. If you look into Ed Edwards, he talks about saving the heads, cutting the hair. He talks about kiss the girls. He talks about that movie. It's all relative to the Teresa Halbach case. The fact that we've got so many truthers that have been swayed by people that are going to ridicule you if you actually dip into this, um, you know, Pandora box of Ed Edward and tell you that you're, you know, you're just a conspiracy theorist and da 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 da. Hell, go break a code like that and then tell me that shit. Because you're not going to tell me I'm crazy. I just got done looking at 666 999 333. 666 999 333. Why you need Ed? Giving us on a location, even. Telling us the highway that was used was Q. Go watch the video. I did put out, I took all the lives down because we were just being beaten to death by YouTube. And so we were being disconnected, having to retell the story. It wasn't making any sense over and over. So I took that all down. I cleaned it up. I put out a pre-recorded video where it's just me explaining the code. And then later, if you want to listen on, I do read some of the riddles that were given that I felt just out of hundreds and hundreds, I picked maybe 60. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds. I do provide the link to all of that. It's in the video. So you'll need to watch that. I'm telling you, our channel, RD channel is about to go viral over this. This code, it has, it won't even take full effect to the people that need to see it for weeks. But eventually, this information is going to come out. And somebody like Zellner is actually going to take the time to understand that this code being cracked not only affects the Lacey Peterson case, the Scott Peterson case, absolutely does. It twofold affects the Halbach case. The other thing that it, it may affect is Carmen Botwell because in his Rhyme and Reasons, he talks about two for one, two at the same time, same time frame, talking about blue in the face, you know. Let's go back over here. Teresa says again, um, or she didn't say it again. I'm reading it again. KK could have been her stalker. What did Martha say? Is Martha here? I didn't see Martha. Huh. Okay. Do, 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 do. Teresa says, Martha, excellent point, but I don't see Martha. Martha, say hi, <laughs> so I can see ya. 
Drama must remain on stage, says he was ballsy enough, and he wrote a book, okay? I am writing a book, by the way. I have decided that is something I need to do. Um, now that I feel like we've gotten this kind of figured out a little bit, I will be putting together a book. Um, I've never even really seriously thought of writing a book, but to the point that this all started coming together from the very first point of when I got involved in the case back in 2003, when locally in Stanley, Wisconsin, which is about 20 minutes from where I live, Stephen Avery was being released from prison. I got involved then because I had fought to not have the Stanley prison. I did not want a prison that close to my own. And so when Stephen Avery got released and it was said that this supposed rapist was getting released and he had been exonerated, I didn't even know what the word exonerated meant. I thought that meant they thought he did enough time, you know, so I was all worried. And then I found out the story that he had been framed. And then I watched him go through this process of starting off with just asking for like $450,000. And then over the lifetime of the process of two years, it went into this, you know, 1.4 million, 1.8 million. Pretty soon it was 4 million. Then it was 9 million. Then it was 18 million. Then it was 36 million. And I, I started getting worried. And I was like, they're going to screw him over. 36 million? Wisconsin's going to take him out. And then when all of a sudden this news came out about this person missing and that um so forth and they brought up steve avery i was like holy crap there is no way there is no way he would have done this and he wouldn't have put it in his own backyard i went around saying that forever um but when brendan dassey's press releases came out it dropped me to my knees. I was like, oh my God, why would he have done this? You know, I, I totally faltered. So then ma'am came out years later, uh, came out in 2015 in December and I watched it. Um, as everybody, I pretty much been binge watched it. Didn't even take a breath. I don't think I left the edge of my seat the entire time. Um, that day, I went online and found the petition to get him out and signed it. And by the end of the day, I had made a website where it was a Facebook page. It was a group. Within three weeks, we had, third, I think it was 10,000 or 13,000 people that were members of it. And we had begun to dig in the case. And it was a movement all at once by all of us that had seen ma'am. And it's when this whole thing started where we planted the seeds um, and I would go and I would research the crap out of stuff. I would jump on, do a live. Um, it got to where, honestly, I stumbled upon some information that blew our room to pieces, which was this information about another Teresa that lived in Canada. And she was a photographer. I brought it out to the public that I had found someone that uncannily had some things. And before I even got to research too much into it, I started realizing that we were tapping into something we shouldn't be touching. We were getting threats. Um, a lot of shit hit the fan. We were destroyed by Trojan horses of people that were guilters. Didn't even know that we had a thing called trolls at the time. We got sucked into guilters that would just explode our, our whatever. And we would make smaller rooms. We would try to weed out guilters. They would filter in. And before you knew it, I just set fire to the whole damn room and told everybody, get a, gather all the information and get the hell out of the channel because I'm shutting it down. I don't need this kind of drama. I don't know who these people are and why they're so vengeful and why they're trying to make us look like we're stupid and that we're crazy and that we're, you know, we had no idea. And the army came on from the guilters to the point and they did it in mass, mass attacks. And some of the guilters would put up, put up as their pictures, the most 
scary looking photos you could ever imagine like somebody with all gold teeth and tattoos all over and no hair and swastikas tattooed all over their body and they'd come in and they'd private message me I'm watching you oh yeah oh yeah so it was really really dirty at first and we were innocent people just trying to help we were doing victimology trying to understand the victim and you know, so we have this long line of history from where it all started to where we are now that I do think it it is something we can put down on paper. There were nights that we set up and we would learn something that just blew our mind and we'd think, how can there be anything else revealed? And the very next day, we would be given a ton of information. Um, we were all together in group one night. When somebody freaked out and came running in the, the group and said that Cor Yang had been shot straight in the face in Manitowoc um, at 5 o'clock in the morning. And now we do research because at the same time, this drunk guy had gotten arrested the same time he'd gotten arrested drunk. And he said he was the one that killed Teresa Halbach. That was hitting the news same day. We do Corey Yang's research and we find out that his lawyer was also the Hallbox lawyer and that he had been in jail in 2005 on October 31st. He was being released. So it got really hairy in there with Corey Yang. Um, to this day, Corey Yang has been mentioned when it comes to the Sikiki note. He was of um, a, a religion, which it's hard to pronounce, but it's like, Shikakai, which is very close to Sikiki, um, his religion that he, his family was part of, they had this history where somebody in high rank in their history had convinced everyone that someone was guilty of, of a crime and they had formed a lynching mob and they had put this person to death and then the truth came out that the leader had known the person was innocent and they vowed that they they left the religion and created their own religion this is the historical part of this religion they vowed to always seek the higher good and see the good in all people and that was the religion um so Corey yang of course played a big part of our research and to this day, it's very strange because there was DNA supposedly found on a murder weapon. The kid gets arrested. They hold him for a couple of years and then they just let him go. So there's some more interesting. Stephen King says, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you Stephen King. Stephen K says, was there any other similar cases like Teresa's that happened in Manitowoc County or any, any other surrounding counties, etc.? Do anyone, does anyone know? Yes, there is the Christine Rudy case. Now, Christine Rudy happened 12 days after, so it would have happened 11 12. Um, according to the reports, she was six months pregnant, she had on a light jacket, some tennis shoes. Um, her husband of three months, that's all they had been married, had his lover with him, which was her best friend. And according to the reports, he put her out of the on the road. She went through a hike of 24 hours to get to safety um, in the middle of November in Wisconsin, pregnant. And then they connect back together. He drives her just down the road, pulls her on the side of the road. She throws a fit, gets out. He pulls out a shotgun and says to death do his part, blew her head off. Him and this lover, um, this best friend, Heather Tisler and Sean Rudy, get out of the vehicle, wrap Christine in a... Um, it's the what do you call it in the back of your trunk it's the mat the rubber mat that lays on top of your trunk they use that to wrap her and they later in the back seat or in the trunk they take her according to records um, and reports 
He chops her up into pieces to try to burn her body. Can't. She's pregnant. He puts her body into a five-gallon drum, 40-gallon drum, something like that. And then goes to the Cobain River over in the Chippewa area, Eau Claire, Chippewa area of Wisconsin, and rolls her body in the barrel off into the creek, which it freezes. And her body's found in March. Um, and that is what has been shared so far. So that's a Christine Rudy case. Also, there were bones found in 2006 and 2004, I believe, that were a mile or so away where it was dismembered. It was human bones. Um, it was a small Asian female for one set that they knew of. And that, that pile of bones was also showing the same, same characteristics as Teresa Halbach. Um, Carmen Botwell was five miles away. She was found claimed that alleged it was an overdose. Her autopsy does show she had methadone and weed and a small amount of ethanol, which was alcohol, in her system. Doesn't appear enough. I don't know. It just seems weird. Um, Ellie ruled immediately, and they were the same people working on the Hobbock case, Dave Remaker just told the family basically without any autopsy, without any medical advice whatsoever, right in the apartment before they left with the girl, Carmen Botwell, he told the family he knew it was an overdose. That's a mission of knowing something before you could. Let's look over here. Dr. Leisenberg, she said the chicken bones was a fetus. Correct. Dr. Eisenberg was the anthropologist, and she was the one that um, could not um, or would not lock into whether the pelvic bone was human or not. And she had already locked in that the these bones in the Christine Rudy case was the fetus being cut out of the body. Turns out that, no, it wasn't. It was birdie bones. Yep, you got it, like a robin, robin's nest. Yeah, bird bones. So um, that happened right before the trial for Teresa Halbach. Um, very interesting. Drama says at different times, each level ice is staggered in some places, but typically no later than 3 p.m., Barbara Ellen is here and said Scott and Bobby didn't have anything to do with it, period. Barbara, I I really honestly believe Ed Edwards has killed Teresa Halbach and framed Stephen and your family. So Barbara Ellen is um, Steve's sister. Welcome, Barbara. I appreciate you on the channel. I've always felt like if Bobby was this terrible, horrible person that really was doing all these depraved searches, you would have seen some ramping up on the computer. Usually they start out, um, when you look at psychological profiles of people that are like Ed Edwards or serial killers, there's ramping up. They start with um, intense abuse of animals, and they do it quite young sometimes. Um, they, they build up. They ramp up to where they commit their first murder, and it's like the... the the Antichrist comes out of the genie bottle and they're let loose once they commit that first murder. Um, so I've always said that I really honestly feel though Bobby is in bad predicament when it looks at the situation. When you really look at what is known in the case, it does put Bobby in bad lighting. Does that make him guilty? No, because everything in this case originally made Stephen look guilty too. I feel this is Ed Edwards using the family against everyone. Keep in mind, Ed Edwards liked to burn things. A year before, Barbara yourself, you can admit to this, there was a fire of your vehicle. Stephen had been the one that had driven it. It was burned, um, I believe, just down the road a ways. Some Buddy driving home from work or something saw the vehicle, which allowed the law enforcement into your home to investigate you guys individually. And what that did is it gave this, this investigative team an idea of who is more malleable, who is more bendable, who can we work with the most to really use at our advantage 
of our goal. And their goal obviously was to target Stephen Avery the first time and the second time, okay? At this point, you have to wonder, did Ed Edwards basically just steal the vehicle and go burn it for shit and giggles um, to see how people would react? Because he had his eye on Steve Avery. If you look, Steve Avery was released from prison 9-11, and then he's rearrested 11-9. These are... These are aligned dates with what if, for instance, if Ed Edwards did have his cop pull, okay, it, it could have aligned the dates perfectly. I mean, why didn't they arrest Stephen 11-8 when they saw the gun on the wall? They were doing the searches that day. You know they were. Why not arrest him immediately? Why hold off one day? So that it's 9-11-11-9, of course. Who's pulling those astrological strings? Ed Edwards. Who owned the white van? Ed Edwards. Jay Peacock says, Hi, Dark Side. Hope you're well and good. Good. The plot is really starting to thicken now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yes, Jay. That is Barb. Teresa Lobinger says, Yes, but he was harassing young girls. Who was? Bobby? Bobby wasn't harassing young girls. I'm confused. Yeah, let's back up. Teresa, you just brought up a point. Not only did Dave Remaker tell Carmen Botwell's family. Now keep in mind, both Carmen and Teresa are five miles apart. Never seen again on the same day at the same time. Both pronounced dead on the third, just hours apart. Dave Remaker, with no medical training whatsoever, enters the apartment, the house where Grandma lives. Teresa, I'm sorry, Carmen lives upstairs. She's found slumped over with a cherry Pepsi in her hand. Oh, you got it. Cherry Pepsi in her damn hand. What do we have in the RAV? Cherry Pepsi. What do they use to triangulate DNA? Cherry Pepsi. Anyway. All right, so she's found slumped over. Dave Remaker walks into the house, tells the family a medical prognosis with no doctor skills whatsoever, no degree, tells her, tells the mother that the daughter has OD'd and that they're going to recommend cremation. Now, who does that? Tells the police, I mean... Dave Remaker went out into the public and he makes a statement in an interview that finding Carmen Botwell's killer is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. Who says that about somebody that OD'd? Who? It's almost like he's playing with words. A needle? What happened? Did somebody drug Carmen? OD her? I'm trying to keep up, you guys. Lynn Morton says, so TH must have still been at S a three quarter of an hour or up to an hour for him to see her. And SA, oh, it scooted away. It scooted away just a minute. SA said she took the pictures, gave him a magazine and left. Right. Slayer Rock says Kratz asserted that a forensic genius removed all traces of murder and then dumped the body on his own doorstep. How perfectly worded. Let's rehear that. Slayer Rock says Kratz asserted that a forensic genius removed all traces of murder and then dumped the body on his own doorstep. I mean, let's quote that. Over and over. You need to tweet that. <clears throat> Aw, Jay Peacock says, great work, Ducky. Thank you, loves. Gloria says, hi, I'm really late. Gonna watch later. Sounds good. We're just chatting, Gloria. There's really no rhyme or reason to today. It's just, it's the anniversary of when this started with the Teresa Halbach um, saga. 
And we're basically coming on to hash stuff out as a group and pull together as truthers. Dark Side of the Moon says Bobby got railroaded. Yeah, see, if this really is the serial killer, Ed Edwards, he would have set up backfalls. So he would have had the person he wanted framed. Then there would have been another person, then another person, and then another person. And can you imagine sitting back and watching all these innocent people get put through the ringer while they try to survive this giant mess? Jazzy Naz is saying something here about, I think they mean MSN Messenger. I missed something. I got to scroll down. Bullseye. The pictures at Cuss Road is very telling. Think about the body bag. It's like it would work great if you didn't have a head. What did Ed Edwards do? Took the head. What are we missing in the case? Teeth. Skull. The skull fragments have never been proven to be Teresa's. Never. And what are they missing in two counties over? And the same corner working on both people? Skull fragments. Stephen King. I'm going to call you that. Um... <clears throat> I cracked the code that was being put out by the AK, or I'm sorry, IKLP poster, which is about the I killed Lacey Peterson messages that were posted all the way, um, even right before Teresa went missing on October 30th, 2005, was released a code that supposedly told where this killer, what they did, who they did, what they did, da, 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 da. And I cracked the code. I've got that out there on a video. You can definitely go watch that. Um, it's a little bit long in the end because I'm just reading the quadrants from the poems and riddles that this killer wrote. Um, and he was obsessed with all kinds of stuff. Well, when I crack the code, you have to watch a video as to why he's being brought up because I am now coming forward for the first time in my life and saying I am locked in that Ed Edwards did kill Teresa Halbach. After cracking the code, I honestly feel that way. I know it. Every uh, After all these years of research, I just can't get past the idea from 2003 when Stephen was released from prison on, it never made sense to me. I would try to put these family members in place and there was just too many people around. There was just too many people for any of them to have pulled this shit off. You're not going to have a girl in your bedroom with your mom on the, the golf course out there talking to her about the mail that she brought you while you have a girl in there. You're not going to be on the phone talking to your girl in a jail setting that's being monitored by the police with someone in a bedroom with you that's being raped and murdered. It's just not possible. Barbara says, Bobby is kind and sweet man. He would give you a shirt off his back if you needed it. Well, Barbie, I believe you 100%. I really do. I don't like Scott, but I like Bobby. Scott scares the hell out of me. His temper is, is retarded. You can tell him he needs to just cool his shit out. He comes off looking like an asshole and makes himself look guilty. And to be honest, I don't know if I would give my DNA to those cops. Now, would I give my DNA to Zellner? Yeah, I would. So tell Scott he should give Zellner a heads up. I do see a lot of forward movement in the case. I was going to do a quick spread on the cards real quick. I know you can't see them. Maybe I'll do that later so you can actually watch the cards. We'll do a read today because it is the anniversary. So for those of you, <coughs> excuse me. I got to get a drink. For those of you that are interested, <coughs> my humble apologies. And to a read, we will go on later today, probably after this live. And I'll do a full spread on the case again. I consistently see 
someone of integrity is coming forward in the case. Um, I just cracked the code, so that should give us some forward mo motion in the case. Barb, you need to get a hold of Zellner. There is a post that was put in the newspaper on October 30th, 2005, the day before Teresa went missing. And it talks about how this killer is going to go murder again. And their title is I, Kill I Killed Lacey Peterson. They talk about going back to their old ways and killing again. They put that code in there and nobody's ever cracked that code. I cracked it. I put the video out. It looks a thousand percent that Ed Edwards um, may have killed this Teresa Halbach. For real. Um, the fact that Carol's on here knew Ed. He drove a white van. We have eyewitnesses explaining many times that they saw Teresa with a white van called into le so barb take that code make sure that video gets to zellner it will help clear bobby it will help clear scott tadich it will help clear all of you that code is worked out so that the standards test out to a mathematical level that cannot be challenged OK, so that is not some fly by night bullshit that I threw out there for fun. I've worked on that code for two years. It was cracked on the anniversary of the code being posted. It was posted October 30th, 2005. I cracked that code yesterday, October 30th, the 15 year anniversary of 2020. So, Barb, make sure that you get that code to Zellner. She will have people there that are numerology people that have went to college even that will be in shock of how good that code works and what it says. And it says right in there why you need Ed. He signs it, I don't know how many times, probably 40 times as Ed Edwards, as Ed Wayne Edwards, as Ed. It's just insane. And it leads me to a place that is within a mile of County Highway JJ. That's where she her phone ping last. Teresa Halbach's phone ping last. So Barbara, make sure and do that. It's really important. It will bring forward motion in the case. I've been divinely guided and I'm sharing that. Okay? It's not a fly by night thing. It's a mathematical thing. I guarantee you. <coughs> okay, I've said enough. <coughs> and I'm getting like um, a feeling that it's time for me to get off here. I'm feeling that we do need to really start looking at this case in an Ed Edwards possible way. And I think it's time to get above the fear that somebody's going to say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, no, the code pretty much pointed us the direction. So we do have the authority by the divine to look into Ed Edwards. Um, it's very, very possible. It does fit his MO exactly, exactly to the T. It is motive and it is means. Okay. I'm going to come back over to top side a little bit. Teresa says Mill Billy's auto needs to be heard by KZ2. Slay Rock says Teresa Lobinger. Yes. Poor Steve never changed his story or backtrack to change or embellish. Dark Side of the Moon says, could have been an accident and the cops came across her body or friends maybe. Barbara Ellen says, he has been doing better with his attitude and the reason he li and the reason he's like that is because he don't like getting accused of something he didn't do. I agree, Barbara. When the whole world sees you as this monster and you're not, how do you even mentally pull yourself out of the slime? You know, it's it's going to just take time. Um, but anyway, I've just always kind of felt like, I know I've stood there and I've said a million times, I just don't see this 19-year-old this kid waking up one morning after having a totally normal life, no crimes behind you, none of that shit, and all of a sudden you're obsessed with death to the point that you're looking up all this mutilation and killing and all that. To me, it's as simple as this. Ed Gein was that type of person. Ed Edwards was that type of person. Ed Edwards probably turned in his hard drive to KK and KK used that to turn Bobby against Stephen and said, ha ha, we found this on your computer. Well, then Bobby would turn around and look at who the hell's been on my computer. Yeah, that's how Ed Edwards would have worked it. So that was most likely all the searches were Ed Edwards. 
face it, are you or anybody else on this channel, nor myself, going to be able to tell who damn hard drive that is? And go, don't, don't come up with that bullshit of, oh, they could have matched it to an IP, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hell. They can't even match the VIN number of a vehicle properly. They're not trying to solve this. They're trying to frame someone. That was for the guilters out there that I got all ugly. I love the rest of you. Um, let's see here. Paul Paula Bradley says, who was on the internet looking up cr crude stuff? Why lie and say there was no internet on at the house? Because maybe there wasn't. Maybe they were using these, these AOL disks. The reports of this riddle, get it, riddle? He may have been working with Ed Edwards. Ed Edwards had a lot of people under him. And let me tell you, it's very interesting that these horrible searches and this DNA file, are you shitting me? There is no way a 19-year-old kid that I can locate is going to know to make a DNA file in 2005. It was in its infancy. DNA would be somebody that was skilled with a lab, period, that knew about blood, that knew what cops looked for. There's no 19-year-old kid that's going to make a file that says, Teresa Halbach, DNA, Stephen Avery. Now, if you would have come up with this file where it was a bunch of naked pictures of girls and there would have been maybe something in there that looked like Teresa, sure. But you're going to tell me a 19-year-old kid living in a salvage yard is going to be smart enough in 2005 to put a file that says DNA on it right between Teresa, Halbach, and Steve Avery. Why would you even write Stephen Avery if you're Bobby? Why wouldn't you write my Uncle Steve or Steve-O? Come on. Get off that. I'm sorry. I've, I'm, I'm just saying. There's no feasible way you can convince me of this. If Bobby had had psychological problems where we see animals being tortured, we see possibly all these old girlfriends that talk about how he was sick and into weird stuff, sure, I could have went with the story. Something that ramped up. But he did not wake up some Monday morning or Wednesday morning and just all of a sudden he's a serial killer. Switch it over. Flipped a hat. No possible way. Barb, I don't think it was ever on your computer. I think they just bullshitted you so that they could take the computer out of the house. They said they took your hard drive. They basically threw your hard drive into a fire. They put K they put Ed Edwards' hard drive right in place of it and said, yep, that came out of your computer. End of story. I do miss Eric Cozy. Maria Hart's yarn. Aw. Okay, guys, I see we've still got a huge crowd. I am going to take just a minute to run into the other end of my house and go pee because I'm squirming. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging with this many people online. And so I'm going to let you talk amongst yourself. I'll come back in and we'll get caught up, okay? I shall return. Somebody's in there, so I'm going to have to wait. Okay. Okay, Barb says, Teresa, I don't know. They never see eye to eye. Yeah, Dark Side of the Moon says exactly who put that in. They did that. The cops, I think. Yeah, I don't buy that shit that it is. Actually, I think this entire thing, I get that Zellner needs that piece because then it makes another 
whatever. I'm not talking on legalities. I'm talking about truthful shit here. I really honestly believe that all that computer crap had nothing to do with Barb's computer. I've always felt like it could be actually King Kratz's own hard drive. I've said that a number of times. Jay Peacock says, I'm with you, Teresa. Here, I agree with you. The proof shows Brendan and Stephen are innocent, but there's more to Bobby and Scott, in my opinion. Paula says, Scott should be friends with KZ. If he has nothing to hide, he should want his stepson home. Um, what did I miss? There's tons of people who are suspect, except Steven. Anthony says, nice job, rubber ducky. Something's going to happen. This case will get turned upside down. Thank you, lovely. You can, you can thank the divine because I dreamed it. That's how I crack my code. That's how I get a lot of my stuff on this case is when I go to sleep, I talk to my grandma. She's passed on, and she she sends me messages I don't even understand. And then later down the road, they make sense. They come into fruition, and it's going with intuition, you know, and knowing that there's something about this code I needed to look at. Paula Bradley says, I don't think it was Scott or Bobby. It was all set up by law enforcement, but they needed Scott to talk against Stephen. Yeah, they pinned everybody against each other. They basically turned the family against each other. Darkseid says that Zellner needs, or Kathleen needs to get her foot in the door to the courts. Yes. Teresa says there's zero, there is zero proof that TH is dead. Agreed. I agree. Runs with Scissors says, I've always thought that it was King Kratz, his computer too. It is. That's my firm belief. I think Ed Edwards was a murderer. I think King Kratz was in cahoots with him. And I think he, um, I mean, face it, if King Kratz is in cahoots, was, I should say was, was in cahoots with Ed Edwards, um, it basically would makes sense why King Kratz always had that smug little I know but I can't say so I'm going to tell you all this shit and I'm going to say Stephen did it but I don't have to have any truth to back it up because he felt like he was special you know like special K special KK hey polyester good to have you a lot of people do think she's still alive Okay, who are you answering to? Barbara said he does want him home more than anything, even Stephen. Yeah, it's just time for this case to blow wide open and get over. It is hard for Kathleen to get past the crazies. I get it. She gets emailed every little detail. I mean, I'm just a little tiny local channel here. Um, and I get the... I get sometimes literally 20, 30 emails a day on stuff that I've read a thousand times and I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying, take that in perspective of Kathleen and how in the hell do we get this code to her that is legitimately a real deal? Well, Barbara, that might be up to you to get that video to KZ. You can actually get her attention being that you are Barbara. And that shows that it is Ed Edward. Okay. Runs with Scissors says, was there something about a girl in the same school as Brendan? And while Brendan was gone, someone else typed messages to a girl. There was some rumors and they all, the, the kids all came up that they had made the shit up.
Teresa says, problem in this case and the egress, egress, I can't say that word, egregious corruption runs through the whole state and they do anything to keep it hidden. Correct. Dark Side wants to know why is the media in that town not got this case all over it? They are run by the cops. Literally, you can look at it. The cop papers, all the letters have the media at the top. They emailed exactly what the media is allowed to say and only that. The media is not journalism. It is parroting. They simply repeat what they're told and that's all they'll do. Teresa says, up to the FBI, why law enforcement agency can investigate this outside of Wisconsin. Carol says, maybe a trip to Kathleen and hand deliver it to her office. I'm never even going to make it in the door. Why would she even want to see me? Oh, you mean Barb. Barb, you could do that. Slayer Rock says, not with you on the hard drive, R.D., Ed Edwards' hard drive would not have the times when Bobby was out of the home. Hmm. King Kratz is a narcissist, according to Runs with Scissors. Barbara Ellen, I don't know how to do send that to her. I'm not a computer expert. Barbara, would you be willing to email me at rubberducky2005 at yahoo.com? I will send you a link and you can simply email her a link and she will be able to get the link and you can tell her that this code, you know, I'll write it up and you forward the email even. If you can email, you'll be able to do this, Barb, I promise. And yeah, they will help you with it. This code is a code that checks out mathematically, scientifically, and it's a code that broke, I broke this code. It was written by Ed Edwards and it was written the day before Teresa goes missing and it tells all the information you need to know right in it. The code is broke and it checks out three ways to Sunday. It's legit. It's also been turned over already to um, Scott Peterson's uh, Facebook page and their managers are looking into it and getting it to the Innocent Foundation. So that's real important you know that this is not some fly-by-night kind of thing. It's real. And we need to get it to Teresa. Um, we need to get it to get Teresa's case closed. And that would free Stephen and Brendan. Jasna says, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. <laughs> We're demonetized, so it really don't matter what the algorithms think. I like seeing the likes, but that's about it. Yeah, Becca would help you. I also have a whole bunch of files for Zellner. Um that Steven wants from Corey Zipper. Or if Barb, just me and you privately need to hook up. Because like I said, it was Ed Edwards that did this. I would be willing to go to Zellner with you, Barb. For real. In a heartbeat. Just let me know. RubberDucky2005 at Yahoo.com, hun. I'm straight up real. I'm not mean. Never have been. I've always stood by Stephen. I've always stood by Brendan. And I have talked about defending Bobby more than anybody else out there. So, trust me. Truly. Yes, and Paula reminded me to thank you, Barb, as well as she does for coming on the chat. And she sends Brendan cards from Australia. 
Drama Must Remain on the Stage said, At Barb Ellen, we are on your side 1,000%. 100% true. Runs with Scissors says, We need to get Stephen Moore. He is a retired FBI agent that Eric O.C. interviewed. The one who got Amanda Knox free and played some part of it. Could we get Cameron? Can somebody figure out how to get a hold of Cameron? He might also, with this code, he might also be able to guide us in the right direction. Um, Lynn Moore says, just a question. If you had a scrapyard with a car crusher, surely if S.A. had murdered Teresa H., surely he would have crushed a car, not leave it in the yard for someone to find. And where is all the blood in the case? Yeah, well, I totally agree with you, Lynn. Or in the trailer. Good point, says, uh, good point, Lynn, J. Peacock says. Drum on the stage says, this is way past Bobby and Scott. John Cameron, isn't that the name, Teresa? How would we get in touch with him to send him the video on the code? Because once he sees the code, he will get in touch with me. And I will be able to work with him, possibly Zellner. And we can actually get some movement here. Chief Graybush says, this is good news. Strange that it turned out to be Ed so many times I dismissed him. Let me tell you, every time I would start on Ed Edwards, I would barely get into it and someone would derail me. And, and I would let my fear of somebody thinking that my credibility would be, would be challenged or something. And I had to go through this whole process to realize it's not about credibility. I don't give a fly and flip about credibility. The truth is the truth. The code is cracked. It shows that Ed Edwards put the placement. Why you need Ed. You know, he puts it in there. Her gone. Her gone. He puts that in there. He puts J, um, what is it? JBA or JP, whatever. Yeah, JBA, it's JBA LLC right in it. That is less than a mile from County Highway JJ, the road that Zellner and myself both have Teresa's phone pinging last. It's in the code. Yeah, the guilters are the cops. All right, JP Cox says, downside here is if he is dead, he ain't here to defend himself. So how would that play out, Ducky? I don't know. All we need is proof that he did it. Which is going to come out. <laughs> he talks about a cave. He talks about the teeth are under a plank. Okay. I might need to dig into the riddles and decode the riddles to get location. Because if we could find the skulls that he kept. I know that sounds morbid. <coughs> But he talks about in the code is is um, his abode where he stores all these body parts. So we may have to really dig in and start looking at that as to where he's saying his abode is. Is it near this J-B-A-L-L-C? He has that E-G in there and that Cosmo Evergreen Cemetery keeps coming to mind. I almost feel like if somebody wants to team up with me that I trust and we do a trip to this Kaz Cosmoth Evergreen Cemetery and we just start really looking if something wouldn't come out and just show us something because it's very near the area and it just intuitively has me drawn to it. Teresa goes on to say, exactly, I've never heard of a crime scene like this. They followed no protocols whatsoever. Whatsoever. Carol says, John Cameron, author of It's, it's Me, the serial killer you never heard of. Yeah, I don't know him. I know very little about that. So if anybody knows how to get his email that I could send him this um, code work, it will. he will contact me. Once he, once he sees this code, he will find me. 
Oh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Carol. Carol got Barbara Ellen my um, email address. Barbara, if you and me, just like I said, if we just want to connect and get this video to Zellner somewhere, if I can help, let me know. Hey, I'm out of job right now. I'm for hire, you guys. I'm a little smart duck. You can pick me. I'll work for you. <laughs> Polyester says, where is the cemetery? I'd love to help. It is in Manitowoc. Yeah. Evergreen. It's called Cusmuth Evergreen Cemetery. And intuitively, I found it. I then found that Evergreen also registered with the fact that Ted Bundy had stole this girl, kidnapped this girl, whatever you want to call it, abducted this girl from Evergreen College in Chicago or something like that. Anyway, he handcuffed her to the steering wheel and bludgeoned her to death. For real. And the date that he did it on was March 12th, 1974, which reduces to 333. It would have been very tempting for Ed Edwards to redo that whole scenario in this framing process. And Zellner does talk about this victim being bludgeoned outside their car. Um, we've often asked what would make her pull over on the, the turnaround because that's where her car was originally seen. Well, if you got pulled over, would you pull around with that turnaround? Remember, at, uh, it was Conan, Irvin Conan, that went on TV right away. Um, and he said there was a big hole in the driver door, as well as the windshield right in front of the driver's seat. Well, if a cop pulled her over and shot through that glass, it would have shattered the glass on the driver's seat. windshield you might have got away with a hole um but the maybe he just saw the window down and thought it was knocked out but yeah if you think about it so a passenger will put um you know a test dummy in the place of the driver's seat and run a pretend scenario if you have somebody approach your car like a police officer they're going to come to the driver door that is the left side of your head that that is is to them and that's what they have on the skull fragments you know jay peacock says we're going to get locked down till today till december the second i've got plenty of time on my hands if you would need any assistance let me know ducky jay i think we should try to find out as much information about ed edwards um, in that time frame as possible. Carol says, RD, I just sent you a link to contact John Cameron. We got this rolling. Oh yeah, this is going to be big. Once this code work comes out, um, anybody that understands any type of code breaking is going to be blown away. I was. When this code cracked and I could see the levels of unbelievable how you can get master numbers to come out of other numbers and all align to the specific date of 9 11 11 9 and it be stephen avery's um release date and re-arrest date it was just shocking and then the messages that was in it right down to the word where and then giving us the location of jba llc just blew my mind look up jbl or JBA LLC, Manitowoc, and it pumps out a place that's within a mile, less than a mile, like a couple blocks, you know, basically, away from County Highway JJ. Thank you, Teresa. She says she just sent John Cameron a message. John Peacock says, we sure should. I think you have broke something huge here. I do. I really do. I'm not taking credit for it. Like I said, the divine gave me the information because I am intuitive, because I am a reader, and I and the veil is so thin right now between ancestors and those in the spirit world. And think about it. We just lost Eric Cozy. The veil is the thinnest. The code was downloaded by me dreaming and it cracked. It cracked perfectly. It helps that I know a little bit about code cracking. Yes, but still. 
Slayer Rock says, RD, it's possible some of these guilters and shills are associated of Ed W. Edwards. He is almost unique as a serial killer who brings in other people to his crimes. True. Lynn Morton, this has got to be one of the biggest setups I've ever known. Amen. Pass the butter. Let's eat the corn. Paula Bradley says, weird they set this up on Halloween too, and it was a new moon, okay? So the way astrology works is new moons are times that you make your wishes. Um, it's a time where um, a lot of the satanic people on a new moon feel empowered because of the fact that there, there isn't any light on the subject. It's like they're in their darkness, their darkest hour, if you will, and they'll often make sacrifices um, in the sense to commune together and form a bond. Uh, in other words, what's done in the dark stays in the dark. So with the new moon and Halloween night, and that was a harvest moon as well. Um, this is a, I'm sorry, this is a harvest moon, a hunter moon, I should say. It's a hunter's moon. Um, it's like Teresa was hunted. The girls were hunted. But we do have huge movement. Trying to put the link. Okay. Um, Chief Graybush says, next nice day, I will go disc golfing in Manitowoc. I will check out the cemetery in a few planks as to, to DG courses. Yes. Um, I will read the riddles a little bit deeper. He talks about especially the teeth and the skulls are hitting under two planks. Teresa, I don't think it's going to let me put the link in here to the video. Let me see if it will to the code. I hope I don't lose you guys. Yeah, this is going to be huge, huge, huge. I mean, this code doesn't just affect the Teresa Halbach case, the Steve Avery case. It very much has to do with the Lacey Peterson case because there's other code work. And this code, it, it carries through with a lot of serial killers. Like now we know that when, they, when you see a C, 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 it's actually E, E, E. You know, it gives us the code that, that we're... Okay, let's see. It would have been on uploads. I know I'm squirrel, squirrel, squirrel today. I'm really feeling um, like a burden off my shoulders. Like I can feel the forward movement in the case um, coming. And with that, I am feeling as though we're making some serious real progress. Okay, guys, I put the YouTube link to the video. If you want to watch the code breaking one, keep in mind it's code breaking. It's not going to be very exciting. Um, unless you're excited to know what the code says. If you're not into math, you can still watch it. It's not like it's real hard to follow. If you can count to nine and you know your ABCs, you can crack a code that computers couldn't even crack. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's that simple. It's because it took a human to crack the code. It took somebody really looking a little bit outside the box. It took somebody with a higher connection than this planet. Intuition. Could have been Eric Cozy that gave me the code. If you email Zellner, just keep in mind that it does not go to Zellner always. If they don't see it as anything important, the filters will remove it. And the emails have piled up to the point that it's going to be really hard getting caught. It almost needs to be given to Zellner. I can get, somebody get Zellner's email address, please. I can look. We'll just go Zellner at Law. I'm a looking. I'm a looking. Give me a minute. By the time I get it, you guys already have it. 
Meet the team, Kathleen Z T. Zellner, Douglas H. Johnson. More testimonies about the firm. Contact, get in touch, here we go. It's right on our page. I'm gonna give you the contact page. I'm not sure that this is gonna get us anywhere just because it's so full of information all the time. Also, here's another page. Um, John, okay, this John Cameron guy is on Facebook. All right. Let's see if we send him a request. I just added it. Click that, Barb. Okay, guys. Okay, let's see if we can go on Facebook real quick. And see if we can find this John Cameron. That's who I want to talk to the most. Search Facebook. Because once he gets this code, he's going to like freak out. John Cameron. Let's just look. It says owner operator at Sunrise Concrete Plumbing. No. I don't see him. I might be seeing him, but I wouldn't know. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know anything about him. Somebody would have to help me out to know which John Cameron. There's a lot of them. Okay, so we'll figure that out. Thank you, Teresa, for putting all the information. Oh, look at Baldone 51. Okay, I'm on it. Baldone 51. Let's see what we get. Oh, it took me off Facebook. What did I do wrong? Let's go back. Let me look at it again. Maybe I said it wrong. Where'd you go? Bald Doan. Bald one. <laughs> oh, bald one. That's funny. Okay. Bald one 51. There we go. Let's see. You need out, Gretchen? Go for it. I get Joey bald one. Yeah, I'm not... I don't know. It's not coming up for me. Do I need to do the 51 like that? Let's try that. John Cameron lives in Great Falls, Montana. Is that it? Great Falls, Montana. RD. What's that number two? That's a phone number on one of his sites. Okay. All right. Let's get my phone. Let's do it while we're on live. We'll see if this works. I got to get it off airplane mode. Okay. We're going to call John Cameron. This should be interesting. Okay. Here we go. Here we go now. Here we go. Oh, now we're going to get all kinds of beeps and whistles. <laughs> okay, the number is 1-406-221-5256. Ready to do this? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to keep him off speaker until he approves to be on speaker. It's ringing. It 
Still ringing. Okay, that is not right. For Dick, dial extension 306. For Kelly, dial extension 305. It's some sort of financial services, you guys. Hold on, we got emails coming in like crazy. Okay. I'm looking to see if we can find a different phone number to call. Should we call? I know we won't get through on the other. Okay. Well, guys, I'm not sure. We tried. Contact the author. Okay, we're going to try it. I'm getting emails like crazy right now. contact the author. Okay, I did get that email from you, Teresa, and it is contact the author at Wayne Edwards, a serial killer you never heard of, and I can put it in there. And I do have a place where I can put a message, so it's definitely worth a try. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being on today. I really appreciate it. And love, if you need anything, let me know. RubberDucky2005 at yahoo.com. MT Montana, Great Falls, Montana. Okay, let's go back to this. It's bald one, and it, you just have to put a space between the 50. Yeah, this is him. Okay, let's add him. I put in a request. Let's go to his page. I can message him from here. All right, so that is exactly what we want to do. Wow, this could be crazy. Um, once he gets a code, then we should be able to get him on here with us to be able to talk about this. Oh, thank you, Teresa. She says she contacted John uh, Cameron and did put my email in there. Good deal. Just a Denny. Yeah. Um, what's going on? It's just a free-for-all uh, celebration of the truthers and all the hard work we've done over 15 years and that we're all very, um, <clears throat> very, very seriously hopeful. We can feel a big change coming. And so we're just gathering to, to share um, information and we're talking a lot. Okay, guys, Zillner's Law Office. Should we try it? What the hell? Let's just do it. It's probably going to be a machine. Okay, what do we got? 955. One, two, one, two. Here we go. <clears throat> If you're calling on a new case, you must fill out a form on our website, www.kathleentzellner.com. Otherwise, we will not respond to your phone call. If you're calling on the Stephen Avery case, please call 630-847-3733. If you are a current client and you are trying to reach me... Okay, I don't know that number. Did you guys catch it? Because we'll probably have to review the live to get that phone number to call. Lynn Morton, hi, how are you? Says, uh, I didn't know you could send letters and cards to Stephen and Brendan. They need to know people care and believe they are innocent. Absolutely you can. Can somebody please get um, the address for the guys and put it on there if you guys are able to get to a different screen? So it said, when I called that number for 
um, Zellner, it gives us a completely different phone number to call for Stephen Avery. Teresa already got a letter back from. Oh, you are so cool. Look at that. Let's dial it, John. Or Oh, no, Jay gave it to me, Jay Peacock. All right, Jay, we're going to dial it. Here we go, Colin Zellner. 630-847-3733. Look at that, 333. Here we go. And forward to an automatic voice message. It's full. Can't leave a voice message. The voicemail is full. Probably because it's Saturday, you know. All right. Aw, Slayer Rock says, my God, I love you, Rubber Ducky. Aw, you made me feel wonderful. He says, Stephen and Brendan have an angel in you. Aw, I try really hard. Okay, Jay Peacock Love, I dialed that and the voicemail, we can do it together. I'll dial it again so you guys can hear it. This is what we get. So we'll dial it one more time and I can put it on speaker because it's just a recording. So it's 630-847. There it is. I already dialed it. I can just hit that. Okay, here we go. Let's get it on speaker. This is what we get right now, but remember, it's Saturday. Thank you, Teresa, for getting that out there. Automatic voice message system. The mailbox belonging... 3087373 is full. Please hang up. <laughs> Are you still there? Goodbye. Are you still there? Goodbye. Ah, uh, then it hung up. Okay. Uh, Teresa's been kind enough. She has listed both the way to write Stephen Avery as well as how to get a hold of Brendan Dassey. And so um, that's important. Teresa, you are just doing such a beautiful job. Like you are listing all the phone numbers and emails and emailing people. I feel like you and I need to like work together more often. Yep. Jay, I think so. I think we're going to call back Monday and try to get a response. I do. I think with it being Saturday, we're just not getting the response we need. Okay, so if you are wanting to write Stephen or Brendan... The addresses are right there on the chat screen for you. And it is important. They take so much morale. You know, it, it, it gives them an uplifted feeling to hear how caring people are. And, you know, that's, it gives them hope. Um, it's just so important that, you know, they know that they've got this amount of support um, that we haven't, you know, walked away. Carol says, sorry, I drifted away telling Cameron about my encounters with Ed Edwards. Oh, that's okay, Carol. I would love to get you on, um, even if it's just a phone call. Like, Carol, I should just do, my, do me a favor. If ever you want to go on, we could go on by phone. So I could have you call my telephone, and then you would be picked up by my mic, and we could actually have a conversation together where everybody could hear, too, Carol. So, you know, my email is rubberducky2005 at yahoo.com. If ever you would like to go on and do an interview with me, I would be humbled by the experience to be able to get more information on the situations of what you know of personally and the history you know. Okay, is there anything else you guys want to say or do today? I think we're going to get off here. And I'm going to rig up the camera so that it shows my desktop. And I believe we should, with the code coming out, as well as this Harvest Moon, for those of you that are spiritual and do say prayers, um, Archangel Michael and Archangel Ariel, I call them forward to bless us as we go forward. 
um, to look into the cards to see what we have coming at us, what are the things that are hidden from us at this time. Remember, this is the day where the veil is the thinnest. I did receive the information to break the code mm -hmm. by doing the same method, okay? So this is aligned with Jesus Christ, my Savior. This is not something I do where it's like a witch or spell stuff. I'm Celtic, okay? That's my heritage. And I work with the divine. And that's what I'm going to do is be working with our ancestors, including if Eric Cozy wants to work with me and he's up there, which I you know he's up there because he, he was a solid guy. He was authentic. Um, and that's what we have to be in life is authentic, just ourselves. So... I want to say that I thank you so very much. Please do show your support. You can also send money to directly to Brendan and Stevens Canteens if you would like to support them. You can email them. I'm sorry, not email, but uh, mail them at the addresses that Teresa's listed for you. I want to send a special thank you to Teresa and Carol um, and Barbara and Slayer Rocks and Jay Peacock and all of you. Just a huge shout out to all of you for making this live incredible. I just wanted us to come together so that you know we aren't going anywhere. We might not talk every day. I'm not going to talk if I ain't got nothing to say. Um, but when we run into these moments where it is the 15th year anniversary, we've had a code break. Look at the people it brought together from Barbara, who was very welcomed by our group. Um as well as all of you. So from the very bottom of my heart, I thank you. If you are interested in spiritual guidance and seeing forward on this case, I am going to be starting another um, live very shortly. I'd say within 15 minutes um, that will allow you to look into the cards with us. And I will be using a uh, channeling with the divine so that I can bring us messages to light. Um, also, if you personally are going through stuff in your life and you are just needing some guidance to see if you're on the right path, you know, that's a lot of what I work with is people that are not sure if they're right on the right path. It might it might help, help Barbara if she would let me help her. Um, but I, I do work with people. And a lot of the times when you think you're not on the right path because it's all chaotic, you actually are. Um, or maybe just a slight adjustment. So I can help you with any personal reads. I do charge for them. I keep my fee very, very consistent. And you can ask one question for 25, two questions for 30, three questions for 35. To do it, all you do is email me and I'll walk you through it. It's a very simple. You email me your questions. You make a payment on PayPal for the according to how much you want to pay. So if you want two questions, put 30 in there and so forth. All right, guys, I will see you in a few moments, and I'm excited to do this. I have two new decks of tarot cards, and I am breaking them in on the Stephen and Brendan case with such high hopes. This is when the veil, the whole veil between worlds is the thinnest that we're going to see in our lifetime with this blue moon. I'm not kidding. It's an astrology. It's, it's astrology is one of those things where it's a language of its own. And um, we are at the thinnest point. So the communication between the beyond and the 3D. So the 5D and the 3D is very thin right now. And intuition is running high. So I think I think so too. I think Eric Cozy found my grandma. My grandma was a painter. She painted landscapes and uh, a beautiful artist. Eric Cozy was an, um, a person of high regard for me. I just totally always did find that I had a lot of respect for him always. So, Jay Peacock says, Ducky, keep up the great work. I'm going to get me some sort and settled later, and then I'll email you. I'm going to get my head into the Ed Edwards stuff. If you can help, if I can help in any way, I will take care of everybody. Thank you, Jay. Beautiful. I appreciate it very much. Jennifer wants us to do a quick reading on the code. Yeah, we can do that when we come back. Absolutely. That's a great way to do it. That is fantastic. Jennifer Manning said that. We will do a reading on the code and the case. Teresa says she needs a reading bad. Teresa, just simply email me. Um, I do charge. It's what I'm using to live off right now. So um, if you want a reading, um, 
I would definitely do that for you. It would help me and it would help you as well, I assure you. And I do guarantee to follow through to be able to explain any parts of the reading you need until you are satisfied. Yes, Teresa, I can connect with those that have passed. I know you guys are wanting me to connect with certain people. I know. All right, lovelies, much love, much light. Namaste. I'll see you on the other side if you're coming there. Otherwise, take care of yourself until we meet again. Much love. Bye.